Good morning. 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 It is morning somewhere. Our folks, uh, I think, in, in parts of Africa and in the UK, it probably is just after midnight there. So good morning to you. Good evening to everybody who's gathered here in this space with us. Uh, we're certainly glad to, to have you here with us on this Christmas Eve. Happy Christmas, everybody. Happy Christmas. Uh, this is an amazing opportunity we get to give our new space a bit of a test run tonight. We, we moved over here so that the uh, shelter would have space to continue operating as it's done for, for I think, eight nights in a row as of last night, uh, providing safe space for 118 people each night that it has opened. That, that's an amazing feat. Yes, give, a, give the shelter staff a round of amazing when when we start to think and draw parallels I, I you know I'd love to see some folks standing out in front of the church saying that in Bethlehem some 2,000 years ago there wasn't room at the end but there's room at this end <laughs> so that's quite, quite an amazing accomplishment thank y'all for taking time to be here for uh, the, this Christmas Eve experience that we get to come together and celebrate Christmas uh, we're also mindful uh, of all of the folks who come together around Christmas not all uh, experiences around Christmas are happy and joyous and so we want to give space for that and acknowledge that uh, and remind folks that no matter where you find yourself during the holiday season that it can be an emotional roller coaster for people but we still can come together and find hope and find promise in the message and in the story of Christmas and that's what we're here to do tonight we'll tell the story of Christmas we'll we'll go through that in song and spoken word and we invite you to join in with us as we do that so we thank you for taking time to be here if you're joining with us for the first time uh, whether you're here in this space or whether you're online uh, and, and wherever you may be uh, we want to invite you to text uh, the word welcome to 919-726-0727 if you're here for the first time, text uh, welcome to 919-726-0727. Uh, and if you aren't here for the first time, you can still text that number. Just say, hey, how are y'all doing? <laughs> we'll respond. I get it. I love it when I wake up and see messages in that thing in the morning. Jim occasionally leaves some for me to look at, so I love it. So y'all y'all send messages. Tell us how you're doing. Let us know how your day's going. Thank you for being here tonight, and I'm going to ask Reverend Paula to come up and lead us in our call to worship. This night is one of profound mystery. A night for unusual sounds and sights in the heavens. This night is one of wonderful clarity. A night for the blessed event of our Savior's birth into this world. This night is one of far-reaching complexity. A night for strangers crowding into a stable and for kings starting on a journey. This night is one of touching simplicity. A night for receiving a gift and for praying God's love in our hearts. We gather to worship on this set of all nights. God is surprising love and hope. We come this evening to the manger, gazing lovingly on the child born to hope to bring hope to the world. Open our hearts tonight as we hear the story anew. Help us to be guided by the light of Jesus Christ, that we may truly feel the power of your love and bring that love with joy to all we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tonight we, we come here feeling rather joyous. And yet, there are many of our folks that are having a difficult time tonight. Mm -hmm. A very difficult time. This may be the first, first major holiday that someone faces after the loss of a loved one. And it may be, it may be a time of bitter loneliness. When we, when we come together as church, no matter where we are, one of the amazing things that happens is that we join our hearts together 
to be able to care for one another, to have compassion with one another, to truly try to understand what others are feeling. And you share your prayer requests with us all the time. And we thank you for that. We thank you so much for that. Be sure that if you have a prayer request that you tell one of our one of our ministers here uh, about about your concern. Be sure you do so that they can pray specifically for you. And if you have if if, if you're not close by right here, even though you can also text your prayer concern to the number that that uh, Lance just mentioned, um, you know, leave the, your request in in the the comment section on Facebook or on YouTube because we will see that and we will pray for you. We thank you. We thank you for doing that. Tonight we are mourning the loss of Daily Weaver, Daniel Weaver's brother, Billy's brother-in-law, Vance's dear friend. And we pray for that family as they go through this time of transition. We're praying for Stephen Todd, for Caroline, for Lejeune, for Joy, for a friend of Edgar Eatman who, is, who, who, uh, who requested prayer. We pray for, for Kenny and various others who have come to us. Join us. O oh God of this place, of all places, and of all creation, you come to us tonight to let us feel your presence so that we will know that there is hope, that there is joy, that there is peace, that there is love everywhere. We know our job. You have taught us well. And so we ask that you empower us to help bring the joy of Christmas to all that we meet. Making sure that they understand the message that Christ was trying to tell us to love absolutely everyone. these and this and so many other things that we haven't even spoken yet. We are praying for earnestly tonight without ceasing. And we pray it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Above the top challenge is an opportunity for us to give above what we normally give, to go beyond where we would normally go, to dream beyond our borders and meet new opportunities God brings. Mm -hmm. This year, I'm happy to announce a group of generous donors have pledged to match the first $4,000 given in December's Above the Top Challenge. That means that for every dollar you give above your normal time to St. John's, they will match dollar for dollar up to $4,000. For our regular tithers and supporters of St. John's, your challenge is to add a little something <coughs> extra to your usual offerings. That extra will count towards the amount to be matched. If each member donated at least $59 to the Above the Time Challenge, we'll be able to reach our goal and continue support of our local and global outreach efforts. For our friends that do not usually tithe to St. John's, this is an ideal time to offer your support because the entire amount you give will count towards our goal and will be matched. Due to your generosity, St. John's has been able to support local communities and beyond. We've partnered with the county to provide an inclement weather shelter to anyone experiencing homelessness. As of 12-1-2021, 896 bed nights have been provided to almost 250 people. In partnership with the AIDS Alliance Service, we sent $4,000 for hurricane relief to the Metropolitan Community Church of New Orleans. There's also mission support in Uganda, which includes an educational scholarship for one child, 
monthly financial support to help with food and the purchase of mosquito nets to prevent malaria. These are just a few of the ways that St. John's is able to serve communities <laughs> around the world. We know this is still true. St. John's is transforming the world as we transform ourselves. And we're doing this by pairing social justice action and personal and community spiritual growth, as well as the creation of genuine community. Your financial support is a significant part of what makes this possible. For our new giving friends and regular tithers and supporters, you can give by using the St. John's app and selecting above the tithe. I want you to know that we are very grateful for your passion, your compassion, and for your faithfulness in giving to support our life-changing ministries. There are many ways to give to the ministry of <coughs> St. John's MCC. You can text the word GIVE to 919-726-0727, and that will get you started. Or you can drop a check into the tithe basket in the sanctuary, or give by debit or credit card in our lobby. And there's a giving link on our website and in the St. John's MCC app. Thank you for supporting the work of St. John's MCC. As we come gathered, uh, as many of us know, uh, and I'll remind us that in Metropolitan Community Churches, anytime we come together in worship, we offer communion because we never know when someone walks through our doors that has been denied access to this table. And we want to remind us, each and every one, that this table is open and prepared for all of us. That in, in MCC, we believe in a firm and open communion for all people, regardless of your affiliation with this church or any church, to remind you that God's unconditional love extends to all of us and that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God and from the gift that God gave us in this grace and mercy. So as you are gathered around the world online, we ask that you gather the elements you have uh, before you as we distribute those elements here uh, in this space. And Robbie, I know we didn't plan on this, but I'm going to ask us if we'll just sing at least one round of it. There, there is love at this table waiting for us as we prepare ourselves and our hearts to receive this gracious gift of our Lord's Amen. that we have gathered, we ask God that you will bless these elements, these elements made by human hands, bless them that they become blessed and holy, filled with your spirit, reminding us of the love, the sacrifice, the grace, and the mercy that you poured out for each and every one of us. Bless them for this communion, and as we receive them, remind us of that love that you poured over us unconditionally, the love that you pour over us each and every day with each new breath that we take. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. 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 On the night that it was behind, handed over to suffering and death, Jesus, during the meal when he was surrounded by his friends, took bread, and after giving thanks, he passed it among them and he said, Take, eat this, all of you. This is my body which is broken for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took a cup of the fruit of the vine, and once again after blessing it, he passed it among them and he said, Take, drink this, all of you. This is a cup of a new and everlasting covenant which is sealed in my blood, which is shed for you and for the world for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. reminded those that were gathered with him that night that any time you came together and that you celebrate this holy meal, any time you break bread together, remember me. Remember the love that I am pouring out for you. And on this Christmas night, this Christmas Eve, as we prepare for the birth of our Savior again this year, I would remind us that as we break bread together on this night, but then again tomorrow, wherever you may be, surrounded by family and friends. Remember the sacrifice, the love, and the grace and mercy. Most importantly, how we can live that meal out is to love on those that are around us at the table. Look around us and see who's missing at the table and make sure that they're at the table the next time we gather. But to pour out that love with everyone we meet, that unconditional love. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the invitation to come to this table. We thank you for the love, the grace, and the mercy that you have poured out for us. We thank you that on this Christmas Eve, as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus, we pray, God, that you will remind us of your love, your grace, and the mercy in a new way tonight. Let us experience that love in a new way. Allow us, God, to feel your presence right now in these moments, wherever we are, knowing that you are right here with us. We thank you for this time of celebration. We ask God that as we continue through this service and as we go about our evenings, that you will remind us to be Jesus with skin on. Remind us that we may be the only Bible that somebody reads today. That we may be the only representation of you that someone sees this night. Let us be all of who you called and created us to be. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> first lesson comes from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 through 7 from the New Revised Standard Version. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trembling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Please join us as we sing, O Come, O Come, Amen. <clears throat>
Our second lesson comes to us from the book of the prophet Micah, Micah chapter 5, verses 2 through 5 from the New Revised Standard Version. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Please join us in our carol, Angels We Have Heard on High. and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. <coughs> Joseph also went out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Let us sing about that manger. <clears throat> Oh, 
next reading comes from Luke 2, verses 8 through 16, also from the New Revised Standard Version. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shined around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Messiah the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with an angel of multitude and heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on, pe on earth peace among all whom he favors. Then the angels had lifted them and gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Please join with us in our next carol first. Well. This lesson is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and then verses 9 through 14, also from the New Revised Standard Version. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh, 
or of human will, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory as of a parent's only child, full of grace and truth. quiet. I know it was, I know it was singing hymns, so wake up! <laughs> this evening, as on this Christmas Eve, I invite you to join me with me just a couple of minutes on the topic, why not? Come on in. Would you pray with me? On this evening, God, I ask that you would set me aside, that these words that you have given me this evening, May they fall on open hearts and open minds. And God, this evening I ask that we not only be hearers, but on this Christmas Eve, God, that you will make us doers of your words. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, y'all, we've made it to Christmas Eve. Throughout the past few weeks of Advent, Pastor Vance has led us through the Waiting Room series encouraging us along the way to not only wait, but to do something while we wait. As Pastor Carl Twin often say, don't just sit on your blessed assurances, mm -hmm. but push. Mm -hmm. Pray until something happens. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking of Reverend Dolores Berry tonight as well, who was a lover of frogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fully rely on God. Mm -hmm. And so this evening, on this Christmas Eve, I invite us to push and to fully rely on God. By now Mary is in labor and she and Joseph are anxiously awaiting the birth of their baby. So much excitement and anticipation as we now wait to celebrate the birth of the newborn king. But we also must acknowledge the fact that this season is also full of darkness. As Pastor Vance and Pastor Polly alluded to earlier, along with the everyday struggles that, we, that many face, we continue to be in the midst of a global pandemic, what seems to be a new normal. But for how long? Variant after variant seems to come along, and we keep asking the question, how long will this go on? While we try to predict, only God knows how long this pandemic will last. And so we're in it for the long haul. While many are out purchasing last minute gifts, making last minute runs to the grocery store for those forgotten items, the cranberry sauce, the chicken broth, and in some cases even the ham. How dare you forget the ham? <laughs> Others are sitting at home crying. They've lost loved ones due to COVID. This is the first Christmas without them. Their spouse died 10 years ago, and it seems like it was just yesterday. And they love celebrating Christmas together. Newlyweds expecting their first child went to the doctor and there was no heartbeat. A family member died unexpectedly. I've had myself several co-workers to lose loved ones, parents and grandparents, over the past month, and including this morning. While others struggle just to provide Christmas for their children, others are sitting homeless because they found out that the house they lived in for so many years is no longer affordable. This week, we officially began the winter season, although the temperatures outside today will make you think it's spring. But in Bethlehem today, the temperature, the high was 57 degrees, with the low of 43. In the U.S., many of us stopped this week on the first day of winter to honor the, to honor the lives of those living without walls who died over the past year something we call Homeless Persons Memorial Day, a time that we intentionally set time apart to honor the lives of those that we've lost. We must take time to acknowledge the darkness, for if we don't, how can we fully understand and appreciate the light of the Christmas season? Would you pray with me again? Tonight, God, we take time to 
to recognize that today is not a day of celebration for all. God, this evening we remember daily, as Jim alluded to earlier in his prayer, God. We look at, we take time to honor all those families, God, who are dealing with loss, with grief, who are struggling just to make it through another day. And God, this evening I ask that you would shine your light on them to let them know that it's going to be okay, that they're not in this thing alone, God. Not only do they have you, but they have us. Amen. Amen. When Pastor Polly asked me earlier this week if I preach or give the meditation tonight, my first words were to myself, were, heck no. <laughs> I'm being honest. <laughs> Completely honest. For some reason, and this is real honesty, real truth here, I didn't think that I was ready to do such a thing as a meditation on Christmas Eve. Mm. Yeah. One of the holiest days of the year. But the more I thought about it, I said yes. But being who I am, I knew that I could not do a traditional Christmas Eve message because I'm not a traditional person in no means, especially when it comes to Christmas Eve and the birth of Jesus. I knew I wanted to do something a little different, and my mind was going in all kinds of directions, but God kept putting situations in my path that kept pointing me in the direction that I needed and wanted to go. And I listened. Yesterday I had the opportunity to spend the day with one of our congregants who has been ill for the past year, almost two years. And she and I spent the day together out running errands and just having a good time. And I told her I needed to get home to start writing today, or to this evening's meditation. And she's like, well, you know you're writing your sermon right now while we're out. And I looked at her and I said, shut up. I don't want to hear that right now. <laughs> And as I started doing my research for this evening, I came across a post that expressed exactly what was on my mind. As many of you know, one of my passions is hospitality. And that was one of the very first ministries I joined when I came to St. John's. It started out as, you know, hanging out in the kitchen and making sure that we had food and different things like that. But my version of hospitality goes way beyond cooking. My doors are always open. At one point, many years ago, Pastor Carlton and Deacon Charles both had keys to my house. And there were days I would show up, and I was like, oh, when, when did you get here? <laughs> and we would sit to 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning just talking, talking about church, talking about life, just having a good time. When it comes to hospitality, I'm a believer in what I call radical hospitality. Radical hospitality goes beyond doing for those that you knew to doing for those that you don't know. Stepping out on faith. Something I think that book called the Bible talks about a little bit. And Reverend Colleen brought, oh, yeah. Reverend Colette Brody Guns in her post, The Nativity as a Story of Radical Hospitality gives us a fresh take on the birth of Jesus. And so tonight's meditation is primarily her article, but I put my spin on her article as well. So would you go with me? Reverend Grun says, I may have finally run out of sermons based on the traditional reading of the Christmas Eve story from Luke's Gospel. So I'm wondering, and so am I this evening, is this the year to gently disabuse people of the notion that the Holy Family was relegated to an unholy barn back from Mary to give birth with, the, with only the untrained Joseph by her side? Part of me thinks, heck no, it's time for something new. It's time for a fresh take. Perhaps in this hard year, people will want to confront, people, people will want the comfort of the familiar nativity scene, complete with this lily white Jesus and immaculately groomed postpartum Mary <laughs> under the adorning gaze of some equally well-groomed animals. But the other part of me, which is winning at this moment, thinks that in a year where so many hard truths about our lives have been revealed, COVID notwithstanding, maybe it's exactly the moment for a more truthful telling of Jesus' birth narrative. Because honestly, this truth is not hard at all. It's just different and jaw-droppingly beautiful. 
I won't go into all the details here because you can Google it, and we heard it earlier. If we read Luke's story in the context of first century Palestine, a new birth of Jesus emerges. Let's take a look. Let's look. Let's take a look back. Mary and Joseph were invited into an already crowded house. Now, first of all, let's get this end thing straight. Amen. <laughs> there were no holiday ends. There were no super eight. There was no motel six. <laughs> there was no inn, as we would think of an inn, a hotel, so to speak. No, mm -mm. no Marriott either. So yeah, yeah. So Mary and Joseph were invited into an already crowded house. It was the upstairs guest room that was already full, not the inn. And it was full by a family of strangers who saw that Mary was about to have a baby away from home and decided to help her out a little bit. There on the lower floor of the house, I want y'all to picture this with me. Mm -hmm. On the lower floor of the house, where the courtyard merged with the kitchen and living space and animal quarters, Mary was attended by women from that home and neighboring households who knew what she didn't know about birth and babies. <laughs> I don't know nothing about birth, birth and their babies. Some of y'all probably do, but Mary didn't either. <laughs> Meanwhile, Joseph likely helped feed the animals and watch the children while he waited for news about this baby who was and wasn't his. And when he was born, the women helped Mary wrap Jesus in clean cloth and learn to nurse while the men refreshed the hay in an old manger so that the new mother could have a safe place to put Jesus in sleep. This means that the miracle of the Christmas story is not only about God taking on human flesh and being born in an inconvenient time and place, but also about the relative hospitality those families in an unknown neighborhood of Bethlehem gave to a family they didn't know was holy. They simply saw an enormously pregnant stranger in the early stages of labor and knew they couldn't turn her away. And because they didn't look away when a stranger needed their help, they witnessed the birth of God in their own living room. The hospitality of this family extends to a bunch of the town's shepherds who came in the middle of the night telling crazy stories of angels in the sky. Did y'all catch that? <laughs> Why not? That holy householder must have said, come on in. The house is already overflowing. What's a couple more? Come on in. We often call Mary, Joseph, and their baby the Holy Family, but it would be entirely appropriate to call the family that houses that housed Jesus' birth holy too. And for that matter, to call all the families that practical that practice radical hospitality holy. The Holy Family in our congregation who found a homeless mother and her three children in a parking lot and took them home to feed them and give them warm, give them a warm place until the shelter opened for the evening. The other holy family in our congregation who not only raises children of their own, but welcomes foster children into their home and treats them with love equal to their own. The holy families who accompany congregants to medical appointments. The holy families who prepare meals for their senior neighbors. The holy families who put their own needs and plans aside to do for others. The holy families who have taken from their own pantries to make sure others have what they need the holy families that have had their own manger experience, turning an empty room into a safe place for someone fleeing a dangerous situation. And the holy family, known as St. John's Metropolitan Community Church, that moved its service to a new location just so others can have a safe, warm place for the evening. <coughs> Talk about a manger experience. The miracle of Christmas persists not only because of Jesus' ongoing presence in the world, but through the radical hospitality of all of those who see a person in need and say, why not? Come on in. That Bethlehem family then becomes one of the long line of, of holy families who extend radical hospitality and inadvertently welcome God's own presence into their midst. This new take on the miracle of Christmas is the light that we need in this time of darkness. Just look back over the past year alone, so much has happened in our world. And it brings me joy to see the number of people who have stepped up all over the world and here in our own communities to take care of one another. That's true radical hospitality. 
Each day we're presented with opportunities to be the Holy Family. To say, why not? Come on in. When those opportunities arise, what will we do? Will we turn our backs? Will we step out on faith? Will we pick up our church and move it to a new location to make sure that somebody else has a place to sleep? Will we open our doors? Will we say, why not? Come on in. This Christmas, let's be reminded of those strangers who welcomed Mary and Joseph and eventually Jesus into their homes and their hearts. This Christmas, let us share the light of Christ and exhibit radical hospitality. Amen. 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 At this time, I ask you all to rise as you're able as we prepare to sing Silent Night and share the love of Christ with each other. As we sing Silent Night, we will cast the light among each one of us, reminding that this light that Jesus brings into the world has been passed on to us, and it is on us to take this light and to, to shine it for everyone else to see, for everyone else to know that God loved them. Let us sing together Silent Night as we light each other's candles. responsive reading from the back of your bulletins. 
Plus all the screens. <laughs> <laughs> in the midst of darkness, candles have shone. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest. In the midst of darkness, we have seen the light of Christ. Glory to God in the highest. In the midst of darkness, we have been promised peace and goodwill. Glory to God in the highest. In the midst of darkness, we go forth to be the light of Christ. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Amen. As we prepare to go back out, we do want to invite you to, to stick around for a little bit of, of the hospitality. We have some coffee and refreshments out in the lobby and, and just to get to, to share with one another love.